Hello everyone. What do you think is beyond what we could really perceive? What are all the things that we could not perceive? Like the universe. Like the molecules and atoms that are in and around us. What is the universe? What is beyond the universe? Why is there universe? Why is there life on earth? Are there planets more like the earth? These are many questions that we can only question and spend lifetimes attempting to answer such profound questions. That is what is knowledge to all of us. Since the evolution of human beings, there are innumerable questions, a few answered and many unanswered, that we see and learn. What we seek and learn is knowledge. The one way humans are different from other living things is that, as far as we know, we have questions beyond our immediate needs. We can ask questions and seek answers that we do not need immediately. Say, animals may not care if there are more planets or not. They do not care about the boundaries of the universe. They care about food, safety, security and reproduction. Humans do exactly the same, but humans do much more than that. I am Dr. BCMR, Assistant Professor at Shastra. Today we will discuss about how we can keep ourselves busy questioning or how humans are busy questioning and since the childhood we have actually been questioning a lot but then the amount of questioning changed or reduced because of many things our priorities or our conditioning and many things like that today we'll seek a little further and try to know a little more about questioning the curiosity and our abilities of reasoning so, as young citizens, it is important to ask more questions and it is much more important to ask profound questions. That is what leads to independent thinking and that is what we are actually seeking. When our needs for food, socializing and livelihood are, are fulfilled, we have so much more brain space and brain time. And how we use that is of paramount importance so basically we will we see questions such as what is the purpose of life is there is it to win a Nobel Prize is it to win a World Cup or an Olympic medal as biologists uh, as biology students especially our life around re revolves around the topic called life and we can ask several philosophical questions such as what is life where does where did life e emerge how did life emerge and when did life emerge so we can first of all our fundamental question why is there life and imagine there is earth and there is no life in it and then how would we respond to that so we need to have we need not have the answers for these questions but we can spend time seeking answers for these questions as a part of professional pursue, professional goals or philosophical pursuits we don't have to limit ourselves to in, in when it comes to questioning we can question anything we can question something like who created life and why did they create life? We do not have to shy away from asking 
the questions to ourselves, at least in our mind. When there is freedom, then there is truth. There, then there is true attempts to finding the truth. The societal norms do, our societal or social norms do impose restrictions on as to what we should and should not think. I would like to talk about this. Um, it is about Stephen Hawking, uh, a famous physicist who was bound to a wheelchair because of a uh, neurological disorder where his motor neurons are dead or degenerated because of which his muscles can no longer move. So there is the body is motionless on a wheelchair, motorized wheelchair and he has to speak through a computer. I like to uh, bring a quote him here. Although I cannot move and I have to speak through a computer, in my mind I am free. Free to explore the universe and ask big questions. I guess we can break the shackles of restrictions, ignorance, biases, taboos and fears and at least in our mind we can question everything. So the motto of us um, is about questioning about everything that we know or we, we find that interesting or as a profession or just as a human being. What else is our huge and majestic brain for? So. There are two things I would like to also emphasize. It is audacity and the drive, that is the incessant desire. As an audacious brain will question everything, a sincere brain will seek the answers for those questions that are true and beyond our biases. When, this, when such an audacious brain is coupled with that incessant desire, then comes the purest form of knowledge, truth and wisdom. That is the goal of an independent thinker or a philosopher. We can ask questions, who is God? What is universe? Why is, the uni why is there universe? When we start asking such questions that are difficult to answer with the current knowledge, then we are grooming ourselves as true thinkers, philosophers and scientists. The first quality of course is to observe, be observant about our surroundings and the things that happen in our lives and that come to our perception at least. When our mind is open we can pursue many more things and then to keep asking questions, why is it there, when is it there, what will happen to it, what has happened to it and then we can reach a stage, when we keep on questioning, we reach a stage where we'll say, oh, I don't know, because we don't have that, uh, that's beyond our knowledge. And we don't give up at that. We still keep thinking about how to reason such an, uh, for, for, for those kinds of questions or observations. So it is the basis of the questioning is the basis of the famous learning method called the Socratic method. It is, you keep on asking questions. We find a mutual topic of interest and then we keep asking questions. What do you know about it? So what do you want to know? Why do you want to know? And many other questions, a series of questions. And we try to answer them intermittently and then we arrive at, at a, a point where we agree or disagree or we find some unanswer to those questions. And the point of questioning here is to incite thinking. And then when two such minds are there, then I think we do, we can come about, uh, bring about knowledge, synthesize knowledge. So there are many types of uh, um, questions. Okay, questions itself can be of many different things. They can be about clarifying what is it or probe assumptions that we have uh, about any object. Say, for example, if this is a tumbler or a glass, why is it a glass? Why, what is it used for? 
why is it used for or we think it's only for a, a is it a it should it be only taken for water can we use it for others can it tolerate hot water or any kind of questions like that and then sometimes we we can ask for reasoning somebody has says a reason for a particular thing we can question those reasons so there are different kinds of questions and I, l I would like to bring your notice to the last point which is questions about questions itself why are you questioning is it that you need a benefit out of it or is it to test your knowledge or are you questioning to test others knowledge or are you sincerely trying to just uh, know a better uh, refine your knowledge about the topic so Let's practice a few question, uh, questions on some of the topics. Uh, you may feel free to pause it now and try to answer, uh, make your own questions about it, about the following images. We have three of them. All of them are simple. So the first one is an iceberg that you see is, why is it there? How did it form? I mean, we all majority of us know a lot of information about the iceberg so it's not a difficult thing to question but still we can question it did the iceberg form here or is it broken off an iceberg from a larger iceberg from or the ice caps from the poles or the question could be about did it come from the uh, why is it in white color why is it not in the like the eyes that we see in our glass so there are several other uh, several questions that can be um, to asked or one important question especially in the science part is why is it uh, floating ice is a solid water is liquid usually solids are much more heavier than the water and ice is less dense why is it ice why is ice less denser because of the bond length between water molecules in the crystalline form it occupies more space so we can ask many questions this way and at one point we might uh, say there are no more we cannot we don't we cannot have answers at that point so here is another question about a picture about a group of monkeys. The questions can range from simple questions, uh, how beautiful they are, or how emotional. We can have an emotional question about how cute they are, how uh, loving they are. And first questions will be about numerical, how many monkeys are there. And you can see that there are three monkeys and one is hiding here or yeah, just located in the lot of places. As biologists, the bigger questions would be, why are they hugging? Did you see any of the monkeys that you know of display this kind of behavior? We can see that this is the area where you can see something like a snow. So they are in regions where there is high amount of snow. If there is a lot of snow, they are hugging. Why should they hug if there is snow? These are homeotherms meaning that they have to maintain their body temperature in the same something like us 37 degrees centigrade and then if that is a, that is the case then why should they be hugging what is the reason for it they are actually reducing the surface area exposed to the uh, surroundings so that the amount of heat loss is minimized as a result they will feel they will remain warm for a longer time did they plan it that okay temperature is lesser outside so we should try to hug and uh, keep ourselves cold no maybe it's just the instincts they don't have to plan up the surface area and other make other calculations to come about this say if you if they are in the tropics and have you seen any of the monkeys displaying this kind of group huddling and I don't think I have noticed any, maybe. So let's move on to the next picture. It is about a dirty fan. It's a wing of a, a fan here, and it is displaying, there is the question that I, I took it for is to see the dust patterns. 
you see here there is a kind of dust pattern and here you are seeing another some dust pattern so which direction would this fan be rotating is it going this way or is it going this way and is there usually if you see the notice the wings of the fan you will see that they are not uh, perfectly like this but they are a little bit bent and when they sweep this way they push the air downwards so this is the direction it is going and you see a much more amount of uh, dust accumulated in this uh, the tip of the blade and why did it accumulate there because that is the point where it is hitting the dust particles and it has accumulated here so would you assume that this fan is going faster or slower than it could actually because there is a probability that the dust accumulated dust here is going to cause friction with the air which would increase the resistance of its movement therefore this fan would uh, move slower and simple questions could be that is this fan located in the ground floor or in the top floor if if you assume that there is a lot of dust of course um, then usually in the ground floor you have much more dust compared to that of the on the top floor or it could just be that it has not been cleaned for a very long 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 time so i hope we understood that the the questioning and reasoning keeps on happening and then whatever i reason may not be correct these are some things that i thought about when you have your own reasoning and we can sit together and discuss about it probably we will be able to bring about much better knowledge um, than what we actually know so i hope i have been able to communicate that we have in our minds we should have we should be fearless in thinking and at the same time it's not that we should bring about convert all those thoughts into actions our thoughts inspire or fuel the actions in that sense we should be mindful of what are what thoughts are becoming actions so there should be a control about it of course the point is to have a large amount of curiosity instead of taking learning as a burden you can take it as um, an opportunity to know more and easily in a focused way so we start out with critical observation when we observe we should see we can uh, notice fine details and ask questions about those fine details and then the socratic method of course we will keep on asking questions a series of questions linked questions of a topic of interest and then we will probably arrive at some answers i mean we can keep on questioning until we say i don't know and there is nothing wrong about i don't know thank you very much and a very happy thinking bye bye